Hey guys, it's Mike with Honeybee Acres. Thank you so much for joining me uh, today. Uh, welcome to the vlog. Welcome to the farm vlog. Uh, we do a lot of fun stuff here on the channel where we talk about animals and family stuff and fishing and all those other fun things. Uh, but today we're talking about depression. And specifically, we're going to talk about depression uh, that men feel. Um, and this is in no way to uh, not include women and the depression that they feel and the stresses and things um, is absolutely significant and a very important discussion to have. I just happen to be a man. <laughs> and so I wanna talk and be vulnerable and talk about my challenges that I have with depression and, um, and maybe share some tools and some tips that I've used in the past to uh, combat it and hopefully be more successful at dealing with it than what I was previously. Now, let me make a disclaimer. Um, I'm not clinically depressed. I don't have a chemical imbalance as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't take any medication, um, nor do I plan to do any of those things. Um, I uh, think I deal with what most people deal with, and that's the daily normal blues. And uh, sometimes I found that that depression can become compounded uh, through various factors that happen in life, whether it's job loss or isolation or a major life change. Um, a lot of those things can really make depression quite overwhelming. And I know I've experienced that, especially in the last 20 years, and have dealt with some of those uh, feelings of depression. And I found uh, specifically these last few years some better ways to deal with it in my own life and I felt like it might be valuable to share some of those tools uh, with some people that may be watching this that they might be able to implement them in their own life. Now I want to bring in my friend Pierre who is somebody that I value his expertise uh, very very highly. Uh, he is a mentor, he is a coach, he is somebody that has helped me tremendously implement some tools into my life so that I can better handle uh, those challenging things that come from depression and position myself in, a, in the best way possible that I can be successful for myself and for my family and for society. So let me uh, just transition over to my discussion with Pierre. Uh, we live on opposite ends of the country, so we did it through Zoom. And so bear with us a little bit on that, but I think you'll really enjoy this content. There's some great insight and tools and tips that you can use in your life. And maybe not for your life, but there may be somebody out there that you love that deals with depression. Uh, maybe a husband, a father, a son. Uh, that could use this information. So please uh, enjoy this conversation. If you have something constructive to add to the conversation, please feel free to do so in the comments below. Um, enjoy the interview. All right, so I am here with my friend Pierre. Um, just, I gave a little introduction of Pierre before, but just before we get uh, started here, um, Pierre somebody that I've known for a couple, several years now, actually. Um, we were in a, uh, an association uh, that, that was for building, building men and to be better husbands, fathers, uh, individuals. Uh, that's initially where we met. And then um, that was several years ago. And then I reached out to Pierre um, probably about a year ago and, uh, yeah. and hired him. Pierre is a coach and has a lot of experience. And I hired him to help me uh, reach a different level of success and and be better a better version of myself and so um, I wanted to bring Pierre on and I know this is kind of non-traditional of what we've done here on Honeybee Acres channel but I wanted to bring Pierre on because I think that his message is quite valuable so thank you Pierre for being here thank you thanks for having me I yeah. appreciate it Mike so um, I, I, I gave your introduction uh, that's very nicely written before but Tell me a little bit about why it is that you uh, went down the career path that you did and yeah. why did you end up specializing in, in, um, in, in men and uh, their successes, their challenges. Yeah, absolutely. So I have to say it was a career path that I didn't anticipate when I first went into, certainly when I first went into medicine, but even when I went into psychiatry, my first, uh, venture was down, was working with and, and 
I've, I've still been doing this, working with people in times of major medical illness. And I think one of the things that I noticed as, um, as my career progressed was that I was working with men and women in various stages in the palliative care setting and um, at different stages of life and noticing a few different patterns for guys and specifically not having a lot of outreach or a lot of opportunity for outreach um, for mental health care. But I, I guess going down a, a more personal route, um, a big part of this was just my own experience with depression in my own life, but attempts to, to better myself and better myself as a man, but also um, struggle through periods of of anxiety and depression. And I think, I think I noticed for myself how tough it was just to even acknowledge uh, that I was experiencing depression. It felt like um, I was less of a man as a result. But on top of that, I was, here I was uh, trained to detect depression and treat depression in other people feeling very much like I couldn't even identify it in myself or I couldn't even acknowledge it in myself. Yeah. Um, and so that really inspired me in working with men um, in the organization that we were both in before working with men who were struggling with depression and realizing how much it impacted their sense of identity and being able to relate to that myself um, just inspired me to, to keep, sort of digging in in the in this this field in this area yeah. which is pretty untapped i think yeah i think so too and yeah. i've thought a lot about why why it's untapped and and yeah. I, I know the answer for me anyways and you know i was raised in a very traditional family a fantastic family hard-working family um and i've tried to carry that through as in my adult life as well um, and as a father and a, and a provider and a husband and all of these, yeah. things, um, you know, I, I have had the, um, the attitude of just, I'm going to shake it off. Right. Like when you just, you know, you're feeling down or if something, you know, stops your, your progress and you start feeling down, um, I just kind of, you know, you just rub dirt in the wound, right. You just, you know, shake yeah. it off and, and, and that, because it's not, and it's hard to even, you know, admit this, but it's not manly or whatever to ask for help. Right. And Definitely. so because of that, you know, I've, I was always very, very reluctant and I'm, I'll be 43 this year. And I would say, you know, I started feeling that, which I think is natural pressures and blues and things, you know, probably by the time I was about 25, um, when, you know, started having the kids and, you know, the pressures kind of start mounting up. Um, and so really for almost a good, you know, 20 years, I have felt, um, I've gone through that personal path where, where I had to, uh, where I buried, 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 buried my feelings and I didn't want to talk to anybody about them. Um, and then getting to a point where, where I'm like, you know what, my life is kind of slipping slipping by, you know, and I'm spending too much time uh, down in the dumps and it's, it's stopping my progression um, of what I could be. Right. And, and, you know, you get to a place, at least for me, um, that, you know, you go places mentally that you're not, you never thought you'd go, you know, like I know for me, I, I have thought many times like, man, I can really see why some people look for the easy way out, which is not an yeah. easy way out. You know, suicide's a terrible thing. Sure. But, but you know, to be able to just be rid of, of these pressures, these stresses that um, I can, I understand. You know, I, I kind of have a little bit of sympathy or empathy on, on that, you know, that I've been kind of yeah. gone there. Not that I've ever allowed myself to go too far, but, but I understand, right? I can understand what the mindset is there with that. And so I think that that was that was where I got to. And again, how we kind of uh, got together on that was because I, yeah. I felt like I was ready to finally admit that, that I, I have some issues with it. And I bet you eight out of 10 men down my block 
if not 10 out of 10 men probably have the similar issue. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's definitely under identified and even, even, uh, so I sort of started getting interested in working with men personally, um, through coaching, but that led me to look into more scientific studies of depression in men. And, and as I've been taught throughout training in psychiatry, uh, men are about half as likely as women to, uh, to be diagnosed with depression and certainly to get treated for depression. And I think a big part of that is just the societal norms and our own tendency not to seek help. Yeah. Because you're right, it's not um, for most of us who've grown up, um, I, I'd say most of us who've grown up in, in the U.S., can share in this, at the very least, in this sort of common experience of um, feeling like there are traditional norms of what define a man. And a big one of those is self-sufficiency. And so um, even identifying the need for help seems to fly in the face of that. Yeah. So I can appreciate the, the sort of challenge of even being able to identify yeah. the, this experience. Yeah. And you're right. I think a lot of guys uh, who've experienced depression probably haven't even identified it for themselves. I know for me, it took, it took a long time. Even when I was in, uh, even when I experienced depression for the very first time, I was pretty young. I was in medical school learning about all of this stuff. I was exposed to all of these signs and symptoms. Um, and I could readily identify it in other people, but I couldn't identify it in myself. Yeah. Right. And so uh, that's a, I think that's a challenge and an important one that often yeah. we don't really talk about. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about some of those signs for a second. So yeah. what, what are some common uh, signs or indicators that someone may be, uh, may be experiencing some depression? Yeah, so classically, some of the big features of depression are feeling low, feeling down, more days than not and also feeling a lack of pleasure in, or joy in the things that normally bring us joy for many men i think the experience tends to be a little uh, a little different in that uh, we have a greater tendency to isolate to uh, not admit or not even recognize that anything is wrong um, to feel really easily irritated or angry. Um, we have a, most of us feel more comfortable expressing anger or, uh, or lashing out or feeling numb rather than admitting or even feeling sad. Yeah. So I think some of the big, the big symptoms for men tend to be a feeling of overwhelming fatigue, a lot of indecision, feeling a lot or experiencing a lot of self-criticism anger, irritability, lashing out, finding ways to numb ourselves, whether that's through substances or distractions. Um, in addition to not feeling as much joy in the things that normally bring us pleasure. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think of the ripple effects of that, you know, and even in my own life, um, because that, what you described is basically exactly what, what I experienced. Isolation, uh, fatigue, indecision, um, or, and just straight inaction, right? Just to know yeah, the amount of, time. of making a wrong decision, right? And so, um, and that, you know, it meant something for myself, but the ripple effect of that, of my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, because um, it, it was not just an isolated thing. Like my actions are in a large part um, influenced them in a huge way. And, and that was something I realized early on was when I walked home from work or, or uh, came through the door after a work day, whatever attitude that I had really set the tone in the house, right? If I was, yeah, for if sure. I was down and out, um, man, it, you know, it immediately cast a shadow on the entire family. And um, that, 
you know, looking back now, um, that, uh, thank heavens I have the patient, loving wife and kids that I have, because that could have really been a, a huge um, irritant in our relationships. And I think that yeah. it's probably a lot of men who um, have experienced that and maybe have, you know, lost relationships with the spouse. Oh, yeah. Lost relationships with kids um, because of those ripple effects. And the bad part about that is it just makes it worse, right? It like kind of stacks on to the depression that you're already feeling. Big time. So, so when, when you feel, so let's assume that, you know, somebody's listen, what, listening to us talk about that and they say, you know what, I do feel that way sometimes. And um, I am experiencing those days more than not those days. Um, you know, what, I, I guess, what is, what do they do? You know, I mean, yeah what is a, a step there or, or at least a first step? And, and I should clarify, um, there's a difference. I think what we're talking about with this, which is our everyday blues and someone who is, you know, has a, a, a true chemical imbalance or, or a medical, it's a true medical problem that they need to get medication and, and those kind sure. of things. Um, there, I think we're probably talking about two different things. Um, and, and, and maybe there's a lot of, a big gray area between the two. I don't, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not a clinician, so I don't know that, but, but, you know, I, I don't see myself feeling to the point and nor have I ever that, you know, I need to go see a doctor and I need to get, yeah. uh, you know, some kind of a drug solution to, to solve this. And like you said, I would rather self-medicate with distractions or with, with something else to, to, to avoid the problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. There's a pretty big gray area. And, you know, the, the, the tough part, probably the toughest part is really that there's no, uh, there's no test or study that will uh, define what's, you know, where that gray, that gray zone starts and stops. And I think, especially in times of big change, many of us can feel demoralized, kind of lost, confused, uncertain about the future. And there are a lot of overwhelming, a lot, a lot of overlapping features to that, to depression. Um, I think probably the first step is just even identifying that you're experiencing something like depression, whether it's whatever you want to necessarily call it, whether it's feeling fatigued, feeling run down, feeling demoralized or burned out. Um, just acknowledging it is a big first step. And then I think the second is, is reaching out to someone. More, more often than not for men, um, and I know this is definitely true for me, and I imagine for you as well, like the, the big tendency is to want to, you know, want to just sort of, to tamp tamp the problem down, just sort of suppress it and not talk about it, pretend it's not there, or try to handle it on my own. And there's a tremendous there's a tremendous opportunity to connect with the people who are important to us in just sharing this this element of vulnerability. And I think, you know, we could go down ten different routes of of um, of handling burnout or depression, whether that be you know reaching out to spiritual leaders or advisors, whether it be working with um, a coach or a counselor, or going down the route of uh, getting therapy or seeking medications. But I think the very first step is even just acknowledging and then reaching out to one other person. And oftentimes that one other person is somebody who's important to us. Yeah. Might be, um, might be a child or a parent or a spouse. And, and usually those relationships, you're, you're absolutely right. Those relationships are hindered in some way by what we're experiencing. We're not able to connect to people when we're feeling down or depressed. Yeah. And, and that leaves the other person wondering, well, that I, was it something that I did? Is there something wrong and I don't know about it? Yeah. So just being able to say, I don't feel myself. Something's going on. I may not be able to fully understand it. Yeah. But 
let me let you in a little bit. That's huge. It's huge not only for you as a person, the person who might be getting help, but it's really big for the other person too. The, um, especially in a in a in a marriage, yeah. it's really big for um, for a wife or a husband to hear their spouse say, "I'm struggling, and I really like I really need some help." Yeah, it's kind of an opportunity for the other person as well. Yeah, it is. You know. Yeah. In listening to you talk about that, and, and I'm, I'm putting myself back in those shoes of when I was doing that, and is certainly, um, it, it, you know, I've, I had a lot of fear um, to going to my wife and saying, hey, I think I've, I'm struggling here a little bit, right? Because, because everything that I do is trying to convince her how great of a man I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> everything, everything from the time we started dating. And so yeah. uh, it was hard to, and I love that word vulnerability. And it's kind of a word that's it's been like overly marketed the last couple of years, but it's really yeah. an important word. I think when we're talking about that, because it is, it was a really vulnerable statement for me to say, Hey, you know what? I think I need some help. But on that same hand, um, and I want to get your take on this, for me, I felt like um, an important step was to talk to my wife who I know other than, you know, outside of my parents, um, there's probably nobody else that loves me more than my wife. And so that was an important thing to talk to her about that in our relationship. But I also felt like I needed somebody outside of my personal um, influence. And the reason why I felt like I did was because I needed someone that was going to tell me the truth, absolute truth. And not that my wife wouldn't tell me the truth, but there's so many emotional layers and maybe hurt feelings or broken bridges or whatever that's wrapped up with that, that I think it would be impossible for her to, um, to be completely honest as it would be for me. You know what I mean? Without yeah, yeah, absolutely. kind of motivation there. You know what I mean? And so for me, it yeah. was important, you know, quite frankly, for me to reach out to you, um, someone that, you know, you don't live in my town or my state or even my side of the country, right? Yeah. Not someone I've ever actually even met in person, you know? Yeah, that's right. You know, like face to face. But but I trusted you and I but I trusted you that you were gonna tell me the truth and that you are going to help me peel back those layers. And so what role does that, am I right in that? Is that just for me or is that an important element to bring someone in that's not, you know, so close to you emotionally? Is that yeah. that's what I'm asking? Yeah, it does. It makes really good sense. I think it is important and it's hard. There are some elements, some important elements of talking about the experience that you're having with, uh, with your wife. Yeah. And with your family. And at the same time, they've got a stake in how you're doing as well. And so um, there is some very strong value to reaching out for help, especially to someone who um, who doesn't have a, a sort of personal stake in right. uh, in how you do, doesn't yeah. have a past relationship with you that's dependent on Sure. Uh, on how you're doing now and how you might have done in yeah. the past and how you might be doing in the future. Yeah. Just sort of someone who's really able to to put his or her focus on helping you to get well and to to do all of the wonderful things that you really want to do in your life. Yeah. And so I, I do think there's some really strong value to that. I mean, it's a hard thing to do. I mean, I, I know from my own experience, just reaching out for help is really tough. Um, and, and at the same time, it's been so valuable. I was, I felt very honored to have been able to, to work with you as well. So there is this element of, even if you don't necessarily seek help or guidance from someone in mental health and you seek help or guidance in somebody, um, within your community who may not be very close to you, there's some tremendous opportunity for connection there too yeah. and yeah. so um we don't see it in that way i think especially when when our mood is low yeah. i think it's it's often the hardest thing to make an admission of wanting help or even asking for help yeah yeah and so i think it's really valuable 
so I was really grateful to you yeah. for reaching out. Um, yeah. And I know it wasn't an easy thing. I know it's not an easy thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So we've talked about that first step and tool and I, I felt like I kind of took us down a, a road, but so um, one of the things that we, that we have is after we're talking and I know every time that we met in a coaching session, um, I felt yeah. really good and I felt like we made a lot of progress, but as soon as the call's over, right now I got to go back to, to real life again. Back to real life. Yep. You know, when we're over Christmas break or whatever, we have so much fun and it's so awesome. And then we dread that Monday where we have to go back to real life. Right. Oh yeah. So, um, so what, what things can, can an individual do on a day-to-day -day basis um, when they don't have, when they're um, is, is, isolated, you know, there's, you know, a lot of people in this audience that are watching this maybe um, are out of work, you know, for the first time, yeah. a long time. Maybe they are, since we're in the COVID-19 quarantine right now, um, may not be oh. when someone watches this later, but for right now, a lot of people are stuck at home um, and probably experiencing a lot of these things. What, what things can people do on a day-to-day -day basis when they don't have a, a smart person to be talking to and holding their hand on, on what they're doing, but what things can, can someone do if they wake up in the morning and they just feel, feel like the world is too overwhelming? Yeah, I think there are a few different things. And this is pretty, you know, it's pretty individualized and personalized. Um, I think the things that I found for me have been identifying what's important to me. It's been kind of an opportunity to, to just sit with myself and my thoughts. And I think uh, right now I feel like uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to connect with people um, and also to, to, you know, just to be able to, to maintain uh, a job and, and have a place to live and have yeah. food on the table. I feel very grateful for that. And just even the experience of gratitude right now seems exceptionally important because one of the experiences that, ma that many of us have in moments of uncertainty is resentment, especially in moments of loss. Right. And it's hard to combat resentment. And I think for, for many of us who've um, gone through life in sort of the, done sort of checked all the boxes done everything that we felt we you know we needed to do to do right by ourselves and our families um to have something really big and uncertain happen to us that takes away our livelihoods it's very easy then to experience resentment yeah so for me some practice of gratitude has been highly valuable usually that's Matt slowing down i think one of the things that i've realized too is um is that i in the past and even recently i found myself sort of numbing through distraction numbing through moving doing a lot trying to do a lot trying to check off a lot of boxes and it's really only recently that i've been challenged to slow down and to practice some mindfulness and meditation and some gratitude. And so I think if I just, if I'm going on personal advice and also professional recommendation, right. having some, some experience of intentional alone time where there's a practice of gratitude or mindfulness is highly valuable, especially now. Yeah. And for those, I think for for those men and women who've experienced job loss, especially, that is, it might not seem like an opportunity right now because it's so devastating, really. But it's also this opportunity to think about what's important, what's really going to provide me and my family value, and then to sort of regroup and do that. Um, the timing is tough. We don't know when, uh, for those of you who are watching in the midst of COVID, we don't know when this is going to end. Right. And at the same time, here's this opportunity to just seize one day yeah. and to be present fully. Yeah. 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 I love what you said about there at the end about 
one day because that really what it is for me, right? It's like, if I, uh, matter of fact, we're shooting this on a Monday. Mondays are always hard because I think, oh, how am I going to manage everything that's going to happen this week? And I found that it's much easier for me to think, what am I going to do to handle what's going to happen on Monday and get through Monday? And then I like that. make sure that I prioritize that uh, mindful, alone meditation, prayer time, where gratitude is a huge part. And I start my day with that. If I do that, it's night and day difference on um, not that the, the realities of the day change, right? Something's going to happen, okay. whether, whether, whatever side of, of the attitude I am on it. But when I start my day with that, there's no question that my ability to deal with that um, in a, in a mentally and emotionally is tremendously better when I do that. So I think that is, that is a very good step um, and something that, um, that, you know, we all need to put into practice for sure. So uh, yeah. Pierre, now you, uh, your company, um, is braver man. I know you, you do some blogging and some talking on that. Um, and I know that your work, you work with men, not just, you know, people that are you know struggling with depression, but just people that are also going through big transitions in their life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking even just to take their, uh, life where they're at right now and take it to the next level. Um, totally. you know, I, and I know some, several men that you've worked with in the past, um, and have seen, you know, great results as, as well as I have. And so I appreciate the work that you're doing on that. What, what is the website? You. Just if they want to read a little yeah. bit about what you've written and whatnot. Sure. It's bravermancoaching.com. Bravermancoaching.com. And then it's on Facebook too. If I, am I right with that? Facebook and Instagram. Also on Facebook. So, yep. You got it. Right. Awesome. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, man, I'm so thankful to my friend, Pierre, uh, for giving his time to share some of that information. Uh, if you feel like that you would uh, need to reach out to somebody, somebody like Pierre, um, you can find him at bravermancoaching.com. Um, I think you'll be surprised how many there are out there that care about you, that love you, uh, that are willing to help you through this time. You don't have to deal with it on your own. Um, if you'd like to send me a personal message, I'd be happy to point you in a few directions that I've found helpful in my own life uh, to deal with depression, uh, to deal with the stresses of life. So with that, thank you so much for joining us on our channel. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope that some of these tools will be useful for you in your life and we will catch you on the next episode.